Are you guys struggling to play defense in EA College Football 25? If so, you're not alone, and today we're going to talk about 25 tips you can implement to get better on defense. With that being said, let's hop right into it. All right, guys, we got this. Let's go. Good luck. Triple E. Close. Let's go. On one. On one. Ready? Three. Three. What's up guys, it's Pick'em with Huddle GG, and we are back with another College Football 25 video for you. And today we're gonna talk about 25 tips you can use to get better on the defensive side of the ball. So that being said, let's dive right into it because there's a lot to discuss. And first we're gonna talk about settings. We're gonna talk about our pre-game settings and our in-game settings. And if you're not setting these, um, these can be very, very important. So what we wanna do for our pre-game settings first is on the main screen, we wanna go to the settings tab with our LB or RB at the top, and we're gonna click on game settings, okay? From there, we're gonna use the first tab here, game options, and we're gonna scroll down a little bit until we get to the gameplay helpers. Now the first one here is auto flip defensive play call. What this is gonna do is it's gonna flip your defense to match the strength of the offense, okay? So if you have a slot corner, it's gonna put him on the side with three receivers. Now, this is important to have on because of the unique formations you're gonna be facing in college football. It's very tough if you're not aligned properly. Uh, so we're gonna have auto flip defensive play call on, and that's gonna lead us to the next one, defensive ball hawk. Defensive ball hawk is something that we have on as well. And what this is gonna do is it's going to help you um, make interceptions a little bit easier when you're going up for that ball down the field. It's going to have the AI um, take control a little bit and help you get in the right position when you're going to make that catch. Uh, and this is really the one time where we want the AI to help us because it does seem to um, give us a pretty good advantage here. Now, this next one we're going to talk about is going to be defensive heat seeker assist. And this is going to be something that as you're um, getting ready to tackle somebody, it takes control of your player and moves them and assists you. Okay, uh, We don't like this one because this is something that is taking control away from our user. And it actually sometimes will make it harder because they'll put you in a position you're not expecting to be in. Uh, and actually is going to make it harder to tackle at times. But if you are struggling a lot to make tackles, uh, you can try to have this on. Uh, but again, if you do feel comfortable at all with your user, you want to have this off. And same thing with defensive switch assist. This is something that's going to have the AI take control of your player when you switch on to a new player uh, and put you in the right position. But again, we feel that's the job of our user. Uh, when we're switching on to somebody, we know the direction we wanna run. Uh, and again, with this one, sometimes it can put you in a position that you're not really expected to be in and that can actually hurt you in the long run. So again, we definitely wanna have these four set um, before we get into the game and then that's going to lead us into our in-game adjustments. Once you get into the game, if you look at the bottom of your play call screen, you're going to see something that says coach adjustments by pushing the right stick in. So we're going to do that and it's going to pop up some additional settings we want to make sure we have correct. Now the auto flip defensive play call, we already talked about that. What we set in our normal settings on the main menu is going to carry forward to here. Now the next one and the first one here that we're going to talk about in coach adjustments is going to be cornerback matchups. Okay, we want to have this balance. You can sort your cornerbacks by overall, by speed, by height, etc. Uh, but when you do that, you can get really weird alignments at times, depending on your play call, and it can have your players really far out of position. So just to be safe, if you leave it on balance, uh, you're going to have the best bet for success there. Now, the next one's going to be defensive motion response, and this is a new one. This is something that they just added to college football. This has never been in Madden, and it's going to really help you out when it comes to all of the motions you're going to see in college football. Now, we're going to have this set to default because what it's going to do is it's going to help assist your team at rotating with the motions pre-snap. Okay, so you don't have to worry about moving all of your guys in the correct position if they're motioning. Your team should do that for you. Now, the next two are going to go hand in hand. They're going to be our option defense. Okay, our option defense for the read key and our option defense for the pitch key. Now, the way that we have this is we're going to have the option defense set to conservative on read key, and we're going to have it set to aggressive on the pitch key. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell our first defender, take the quarterback, ignore the running back. And then it's going to tell our second defender, ignore the quarterback, take the pitch man. So we should have the pitch man and the quarterback taken away with these two settings. And all we have to worry about with our user then is the running back up the middle. Now the next two, we're going to have strip ball, we're going to have tackling, and they kind of go hand in hand as well. Uh, I like to have these at balance. You can put them at conservative, especially the way that tackling is right now in college football 25. There are a ton of broken tackles. 
So what you can do is put these to conservative. Um, that's going to help your AR, your computer players, make tackles more frequently. Uh, they're going to see a lot less broken tackles. And if you do want to strip the ball or you do want to go for a big hit, we want to do that with our user anyways. And these settings are not going to affect us either way on that. So again, if you want your AI to be safe, set these to conservative, and then you can focus on stripping and using the hit stick with your user. Now, the last three here are going to be our zone drops. Okay, with zone drops, um, these are something that depends on the type of player you're playing against, right? What they're going to do is if you leave them at default, it's just going to have your zones play their normal responsibilities. All right, but what we can do, and this was added a couple years ago in Madden, is we can set these to certain depths. So your flats, which are going to be your hard flat, cloud flat, soft squats, you can set them to anywhere from 0 to 30 at 5 yard intervals. And you can do the same thing for your curl flats uh, and for your hooks. Okay, so your yellow zones over the middle, uh, and then your curl flats are going to be those purples. Uh, so you can set the depth that they're going to go back on a play. And that's very important, and we can use that uh, to really defend something in our next tip. As I said in our last tip, there is a time and place to use zone drops, and one of those times is to defend corner routes, specifically out of compression sets. So what we want to do is we want to have our flat set to 25 or 30, and we want to have our curl flat set to 5. Now from there, we're going to come out on a cover 4 style defense, and to the side that they're running the corner route, again, a lot of times you'll see this flat corner streak. What we want to do is we want to put the outside corner on a cloud flat, and we want to put the safety in a deep half. It's going to look like that to the right side of the screen. And then when they go to try to throw this concept, we're going to have the flat taken care of. And if they try to throw over our 25 or 30 yard cloud flat, he's going to be there to defend that route as well. Another key aspect at getting better on defense is understanding the difference between zone coverage and match coverage. Now match coverage is going to look a lot like zone coverage, but it's going to have specific man or pattern matching rules built into it based off of your opponent's route combinations and their formations. Okay, I could spend hours talking about the details of match and we will have videos on the channel, but I do want to show you briefly what I mean here. So if you look at our player, you can see that we're in a cover three sky where we have the three deep, the two yellows and those two purples. Now those purples are curl flats in a cover three sky. If we audible over to a cover three match, you're going to see that it looks almost identical other than those purples are now called seam flats. Okay, now these two plays, although they look identical, they're going to play very different. If we look at just a simple four verticals play here against cover three sky, what you're going to see is they're going to be able to hit the seam pretty easy because nobody's going to follow him down, right? No one's going to match with him. You will get a zone chuck with your curl flats. Um, again, what you see here with we'll zone chuck there, um, but then he's just going to leave him and get into this open spot. And that's going to be an easy completion against cover three. Now, if we audible to cover three match and we run that same exact play, what you're going to see here is now that seam flat is going to match and he's going to make that a tighter throw and make it so your opponent really can't make that read. So if we look at the replay here real quick, you can see that instead of getting that zone chuck and letting him run by, now he's going to follow this down the field and match or man up to this route based off the formation and the route concept that your opponent is running. Now, if you're struggling to understand which of your plays are zone and which of your plays are match, etc., these next two tips are for you. And the first one is very simple. We want to look into the top left of our play art screen. So you see here, these three plays have three different tags. The one on the left is zone, the one in the middle is blitz, and the one on the right is match. This is going to give you a general basis of what the play call is. Now, the second part to that is very important. It's going to be looking at the actual play art itself. Okay, so the colors of the zones are important. If you see anything that has light pink versus purple, the light pink is typically going to tell us that it's a matching style coverage. For instance, cover four palms on the right, it has that light pink on the underneath zones. That's telling us those are matching style zones. Whereas cover three sky on the left is that darker purple color, which is telling us it's more of a traditional zone drop style play. Now, if you do notice the one in the middle, although it doesn't say match, it is going to have the light pink zones. So that strong safety blitz three does have match principles built into it as well. This next tip is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make, and it's not understanding how to use quick adjustments. Now, a lot of people know if you click onto a player and push A, you're going to be able to adjust that individual player, but you can actually adjust anyone on the field without going away from your user to make sure you don't get clicked on the wrong person. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to push the right stick in here to look at this little menu. This is just a helper in practice mode. You can see defensive line is left on the D-pad, linebacker's right, and secondary is Y. So if we push Y for secondary and then we push Y again for quick adjust, you're going to see that it's going to pop up all of our defensive backs on the field that we can adjust. Now, instead of having to click onto that right of screen safety, we can just push A and then push him in a deep middle third. And you're going to see now, if we look at our play art, he's now in a deep middle third and we never had to actually navigate our user over to him to make that change. These next few tips have to do with your user on defense, and the first one I may catch some heat for, but get off of that defensive lineman. It is not going to be the most effective way to play defense. Using a middle linebacker or safety over the middle of the field is much more important because you can cover so much more ground than the AI can. Now, the second part is when you are using this guy over the middle of the field, you need to understand where your responsibility is and stay true to it. Okay, so for example, if we're in a cover two, Obviously, it makes sense not to sprint down here with the safety and leave the whole deep right side of the field wide open, but it's equally as important over the middle of the field to do the same. So you can see here, you're responsible for the intermediate middle. If we would sprint all the way over here and cover something, you're leaving the middle of the field wide open uh, for your opponent to attack. Now, both of those tips would be for not if we don't have the right user. So when we're looking for a user, we wanna look for a tall player who has good athletic attributes like speed, agility, change of direction, acceleration, and jumping. Speaking of our user, we have more control than ever this year with the introduction of the switch stick. Now the switch stick is going to allow us to switch to any coverage defender on the field by simply flicking our right stick in the direction we wanna go. So what you'll see here is if we say hike, we can actually use all four of the players on the right side of the field pretty quickly by just flicking that right stick in the direction that we want to go. Now, it's very important to understand that once you switch off of a defender, he's going to go back to his original responsibility on the play. So just make sure you keep that note in your head when you are using this mechanic. The next tip is understanding the importance of audibles, how to set them, and how to effectively use them in-game. Now first, how to set them. When you're looking at any formation, simply push left trigger and it's going to pop up the four slots available for you to set your audibles. From there, we're going to click on any of the slots and scroll through the formation and pick the plays that we want. From there, when we come out in the play, this is where we can now use the audibles. To do so, simply push X. Now when you do that, you're going to see the four plays that you set that you can now switch to. This is very important because if you come out on the wrong play or your opponent changes their play, you want to be able to change your play as well. Now, a little pro tip when your opponent is running no huddle, it's going to automatically pop this screen up when they use that. If you want to just use your original play, simply push B instead of left trigger to reset the play. And that's going to avoid weird alignments and also it's going to avoid resetting your zone depths. This next tip is something that I feel is one of the most important things you can do on defense and it's going to be something that a lot of people don't want to do, but it will make you a better defensive player and that's understanding when to swap the ball and when to go for the interception. Now, typically my rule of thumb is if it is a deep ball down the field one on one, I'm going to go with the swat just to be safe and avoid giving up that big play. So if you do see your opponent do something like this where they're throwing a deep vertical down the sideline, instead of trying to pick that off, if we click on and simply push that X button to use that swap mechanic, it's going to be a much safer option for us in the long run. Getting the best personnel on the field is huge and there's an easy way for us to do this. Before we go into a formation, if you look at the bottom and you see where it says packages, if we flick our right stick right or left, you're going to see that it switches the personnel. So for instance, if you want to run nickel over but use three safeties, if you flick the right stick to the left, it's going to do free safety one inside package, which is going to bring our safety into the slot and have a three safety package. Now, you can also do this by pushing Y and going to the individual positions and pushing A and substituting them out individually. So you have both options in making sure you have the right personnel on the field. Another new mechanic we can take advantage of is the new coverage shell options. Now to use this when you're actually in the formation, if you use the right stick left or right, you can see that you can show any coverage shell you want with cover zero, two man, cover two, cover three, cover four, or cover six, regardless of what play you pick. So let's say that you want to pick cover four quarters, which is traditionally a two high safety look, but we want to come out in a cover three shell. If we pick this play, you can see that our defense looks like we're in cover three with that one high safety look, 
but if we look at our play art, you can see we're still in that cover four quarters play that we chose. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the importance of alignment in this game. And to show this, we're going to be going against the Tennessee wide formations, specifically wide stack. Now, there are two ways we can adjust the alignment of our defense. One is with the coverage shell option that we just talked about in the last tip. And the second one is understanding how our play call affects things and understanding the difference between two high safety looks and one high safety looks. So we're going to start out in this cover four quarters, two high safety look, and you can see immediately we are at a disadvantage and they could run the ball up the middle the entire game if we came out like this because we only have five people in the box. Now, a simple change to a one high safety look in this situation will align our defense much better. So something like cover one hole or cover three sky will put us in a much better position on defense where we now have six in the box to help defend the run. We still have that deep middle of the field safety and we still have two people on each side of the field to help out with those two split out receivers. And if you're interested in getting better at Madden, make sure to join our free discord by going to huddle.gg discord. Have a great day.